DeMar DeRozan is one of the most fascinating players in the NBA today because what he does well, he does really, really well. As we saw last night in, in Indiana, 46 points on 15 and 24 shooting, nine rebounds, three assists, two steals, you know, game time bucket to send it into overtime, eight points in overtime to help Chicago essentially steal a win. We talk about who's the closest to Kobe Bryant. We say guys like Tatum, Devin Booker, even Jimmy Butler, like, I, 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 like, but like in terms of like the shot making and the footwork and and the poise and the degree of difficulty and, and the post up and the mid range stuff, like I really don't think it's such a hot take to say Demar Derozan is the closest thing we have to Kobe Bryant in that sense. And it's also crazy when you consider that this dude is 34 years old, leading the league in minutes, still putting up 23 points, four rebounds, five assists. Like he was Player of the Week. I think it was last week or a couple weeks ago. He's now 32nd on the all-time scoring list. With that game against Indiana, he passed guys like Elgin Baylor, Adrian Danley, and Dwayne Wade. So, like, the good stuff with DeRozan is really, really good. And, and like, you would think, like, just off that alone, he would, like, be so much more accomplished, so much more praised, which is not to say that he isn't, but, like, you just look at that stuff and you're just like, wow, that's got to be one of, like, the all-time greats. The counter to that, though, obviously, is that, you know, this dude can't really shoot the three so well, which I think is a really bad thing in today's NBA where you know, like damn near everyone needs to be able to shoot threes. It's particularly not good for a guy who for most of his career has been playing the shooting guard position. So, you know, teams have tried to like figure out how to build around that. You know, I know like the Spurs and the Bulls a little bit have tried experimenting with him at power forward, but like that doesn't work because like obviously he can't really defend power forwards. Also not that great of a perimeter defender. Um, He's not, like, the best playmaker, solid playmaker, but not, like, a table setter, um, you know, run the show type of guy. He's, he's just, like, a very strange archetype. Where, again, what he does, he does at an insane level, but, like, it's really hard to build around that kind of volume scorer, at least when he's not, like, you know, again, he might be a really great scorer, but is he, like, in that truly upper elite echelon, like, you know, for example, the Prime Hardens, the Rance, Currys, like, all those guys, like, no, it's, like, he's been really hard to build around as, you know, a number one guy, and as we've seen those shortcomings, most notably in Toronto, so he doesn't necessarily have playoff success, so it's kind of like, okay, like, where does he, where does he, like, fit into a potential winning situation? It's been really hard to figure that out, and, and I don't really know if that situation exists, but that's why it's so frustrating, because then we have games like the one we just saw against Indiana, where just, like, from a raw talent perspective, this dude is so good, and when you talk about guys you want to go to who can get you a bucket, from basically anywhere inside the three-point line. He also gets to the line quite a bit, which is like a gold mine for teams looking for easy points. Like, it's just, like, it's this tough balance. But again, like, when it's right, it's it's so beautiful to watch. Like, you just watch this dude off highlights alone. It's it's one of the most remarkable things ever. And I guess the reason why this is so interesting for DeRozan is because he's going to be a free agent this summer. Um, it has nothing to do with, like, what he could do for the Bulls if he were smart he would not return to the Bulls because as we all know the Bulls are just like going literally nowhere um but like I, I think why this performance got me sort of thinking about DeMar DeRozan is because he's going to be one of the most fascinating players to hit the free agency market because the talent is there it's there still so much in bunches again like even though he's 34 years old like we obviously talk about the insane longevity of LeBron, Durant, and Curry, and obviously not trying to say DeRozan should be on that level, but like I do think he definitely deserves some props again for being 34 years old, still putting up 23, 4, and 5, leading the league in minutes, doing whatever he can to try and help the Bulls win games. Like that's not again, is it on those guys' level? No, because those guys are simply just better. They always have been, they always will be. But like that's still something to be said, and so it, it's going to be very interesting. I think when you have this guy who from a raw talent perspective is so great and the things he does, you know, the, the skills he brings to the table, he brings them at such an elite level, but, you know, the skills that he brings at that elite level, like, are, are very unique and, and not so applicable to today's game, where, again, it's a lot of, like, mid-range post-up work and, and you factor that in with sort of his weaknesses, where he's not such a good defender really anywhere and he can't shoot threes and that's just, like, really difficult, like, like, can you fit him into more of a complementary role if he can't necessarily play off the ball? But then if you're putting the ball more in his hands, is that like the best way to maximize the team if he's one of your leading guys? It's this very confusing situation for him, but I really do hope he lands 
in the right spot because again with games like you just saw against Indiana this dude is a shot maker supreme who I think again just from a talent perspective can really help a team because there aren't that many guys who you could just go to to get a shot like that maybe his future role is more of like as a sixth man like where it's like hey we don't want you to like lead anything like be the engine to anything just like come in and get buckets for however many minutes we give you for the 20 minutes we give you maybe that might be the role for DeRozan and like maybe he's too overqualified for that but like maybe that's just like what it has to be at this later stage in his career and maybe you he'd rather be overqualified for a role in a contender versus underqualified for a role like he has with the Bulls but it's just like it's just basically like every time DeMar DeRozan comes onto my timeline I'm always so impressed I'm always like wow why isn't this guy held in a higher regard and it's again it's that balance between the pros he brings to the table and the cons like I just like I, I really hope he can find that right situation this summer because again like like the pros like they're just they're so insane and I really want to see I would love to see him win a championship but like if nothing else I want to see them put to like good use to use that's like actually trying to compete for a championship because I do think he can contribute in that sense like, like we saw last night in Indiana like we've seen the last few years in Chicago this season in particular even though like not a lot of people have talked about it or even noticed it like I didn't even know he won player of the week until like it was like announced I didn't know he was having that kind of week or even that kind of year um so I hope he figures it out because he's just he's such a great player and he's obviously such a class act as a person that I really do think he deserves to find that opportunity and I really hope he finds it this summer